good morning everybody welcome back to my channel hello to a very greasy greasy me i am currently on my on my last day of well my last day of something's gotta give we've been soaking in the grease my hair i had it in a hairsprayed and gelled bun yesterday and today's the day where I just need to reassess and reset my hair, body, and mind for the week ahead. So today I wanted to show you kind of my like weekly beauty maintenance routine. Today's the day I'm gonna take you through my kind of weekly beauty maintenance routine and that involves my hair. I'm going to put on a tan, show you what I do before and after a tan, and that'll pretty much be it. But I'm sure there'll be a lot of blabbing as there always is with my videos. So here's my little weekly glow up, if you will, guys. Let's take this greasy nugget and turn her into a bronzed and beautiful butterfly. So because I'm doing this in the morning, I am about to do my little morning workout. So I'm gonna be starting with my hair. I've talked about this tip a million times, but it's one of my favorite things to do. If I'm going to work out and I know that I'm going to be washing my hair after, I put my hair mask in to soak while I do my workout. You can also put a hair mask in overnight to let it soak overnight, but sometimes that's a little bit of a struggle with the pillowcases and whatnot. So sometimes it's just easier for me to do it in the morning if I know I'm gonna be doing a workout. So that's what I'm gonna do first, my hair. Wow, she needs some love, like look at that. She's like, I am crispy, please moisturize me. So what I do, a lot of the times a hair mask will require being applied onto dry hair. So I don't like go and wash my hair or anything. Like a lot of hair masks actually, to my annoyance, will be like, use this after shampooing. And I just sit there and I'm like, you want me to wash my hair, sit there clean, put a hair mask in and stand in the shower for 10 minutes? like. No ma'am. So I try to use a hair mask that just says like apply to damp hair or apply to your hair and not specifically after shampooing because ain't nobody got time to be standing naked in the shower like that. We'll save those for bath nights. Anyway, so I'm just going to literally run my hair under the water and get a little bit damp. Okay, the hair is dampened. Now I'm gonna take my hair mask. You guys know I've been using the Amica, the Cure Hair Mul sorry, <laughs> Multitask Repair Treatment. And I just take this and run it mainly in my ends. That's where you guys witness that I'm the most like dry and crispy. I love this container, this packaging for a mask. It's so much easier to do this than like scooping out of a tub and it getting all under your nails and whatnot. Like this is just very efficiently applied. I like it a lot and my hair has been loving this. It smells really nice. I try not to put too much in my roots, but I'll kind of just run it over the top and just gently. And the hair just needs generally an extra shot of moisture to loving. So just making sure it's all nice and run through here. If you have a brush to spare, you could also brush through it, but I usually just like to kind of finger comb through my hair to make sure that it's all nicely in there. And then I put my hair up into a nice high bun. This is not ideal. Armine, my darling friend and hairstylist would be screaming at me right now. But when I'm doing a workout, I just don't wanna to have to worry about my hair <laughs> falling out, especially when it's covered in like a juicy, oily, moisturizing mask. So I take my big scrunchie, this is my Lululemon scrunchie, whatever scrunchie you have, just to hold it up there. And then that's it, the hair is up, ready to go, sitting in its moisture. I'm gonna put my watch on, don my workout gear, do my workout, and I'll check back in with you after to continue onward. <laughs> <laughs> that workout aged me. I am, I'm a tired bee and I'm also really, woo, I'm cold now in my sweatiness. I've made my little protein shake. I love to drink that while I am in the shower. I watch my, not my, when I say my YouTube videos, I watch YouTube videos. I catch up on YouTube while I am doing this like kind of morning routine and especially when I'm putting a tan on, it's extra long. I'll either put Netflix on or catch up on YouTube videos while I'm showering and whatnot. So this is kind of my like zen alone me time in the day, you know? Okay, so now it's shower time. I'm gonna walk you guys through what I use in the shower, mainly for my hair. So I actually use a number of different shampoos and conditioners and things, kind of depending on how frequently I'm washing my hair. Right now, when I put this really thick moisturizing mask in, I'm going to do a double shampoo. So I've been using the Amica The Cure Collection, the Bond Repair Shampoo and Conditioner. I kind of use this on my in-between days. So right now, the first thing I'll do is go in, rinse my hair, do a little 
dollop of this and rinse it out. Then, because I do have highlights in my hair, I like to go in with a purple shampoo. So this is the Kerastase Blonde Absolu Anti-Brass purple shampoo. I've been using this for years. Like anytime I've had blonde in my hair, this is the one I've been going to and it's pretty strong. So I like to make sure that I use like a different shampoo to rinse out the mask and whatnot. And then I'll kind of just put this like on the blonde bits and let it soak for a couple minutes. This is just how I do it. <laughs> if you feel differently, do your thing, you do you boo, but this is just what I do. So I rinse my hair with one shampoo. Then I take the purple shampoo. I leave that in for a couple of minutes and then I rinse that out. And then when I use the purple shampoo, just cause it is a little bit stronger, a little bit more stripping on the hair. That's when I use this. This is technically a treatment, but I use it like a conditioner. This is the same Blonde Absolute line. Again, I've been using this one for years and I've been kind of reserving this just cause my hair, like it doesn't have as much blonde. Like I was using this when I was a full blonde, but just because those parts that are highlighted are a little bit more weak and a little bit more damaged, I kind of just put this on like a mask at the end, but it rinses out nice and easily like a conditioner. Like I wouldn't use this like I use the Amica treatment mask, like putting it on during my workout. I very much use this like a conditioner. So I put this in, focus it on the ends of my hair, and then I let that sit. While it's sitting, because I am going to be applying tan today, I do a pretty big exfoliation. I have this mitt, this is the Saint Tropez like tan removing scrubby mitt. I bought this at Shoppers, it's actually really great. I find it very effective. <laughs> in the uh, exfoliation and tan removal. So I just use that and my Dove body wash and give my entire body a really good scrub. I also shave, I will shave my pits, shave my legs and whatnot, make sure everything's nice and smooth. And that's my in shower moment. I will be naked and I will not be putting a bathing suit on just for the sake of some shower clips, but you get the general idea. I go in there, I wash my hair and I wash my body. <laughs> um, Sometimes I dry brush. I have my little goop dry brush. However, I am very aware that I don't follow a proper routine and a lot of you seem to get offended by that. So we'll just ignore the dry brush for now. I will do my own thing on the dry brush end and I promise you someday I will make an effort to learn how to do it properly and do the routine. So for now, I'm gonna scrub my dead skin away and get the body nice and smooth and supple and ready for tan application. <laughs> I forgot to mention that I'm also gonna take my face wash in and wash my face in the shower. That's the final step, I promise. It goes <laughs> reveal when we get back. All right, I'm out of the shower, the hair is washed, and I'm ready for some skincare. I'm doing the same skincare lineup. I've talked about this a bunch. Um, I did a whole kind of morning skincare routine recently, but just getting my vitamin C in there, redness neutralizer, and my face cream. And I'm gonna leave it there for now. Actually, I'm not gonna apply my oil or my tinted sunscreen because I am going to be putting tan on my face and I'm going to let that bake. So that's the face. I'm gonna leave that for now. Let's talk about tan. I'm kind of gonna be jumping all over the place here because that's just how my brain works. But I have two tans that I've been using. I have the Saint Tropez Express. Oh my God. I have the Saint Tropez. I have the Saint Tropez. I can't say it. Holy, I cannot say this right now. Saint Tropez Express. Oh my God, I don't know why that was so hard to get out. And then I also have the Whipped Mousse, the Ashley Graham collection. These are the two that I am just currently making my way through and enjoying. So basically, if I am sleeping in a tan, if I'm doing this kind of beauty routine, exfoliating routine at night, then I will put on the Ashley Graham one because this one says to soak in it for four to eight hours. So that's one that I will sleep in. But when I'm doing it during the day, I like the express mousse because you can leave it on for one to three hours. So this one is one that I just sit and bake in in a robe during the day. So depending on when I'm doing it, we'll determine what tan I'm using. So obviously today I'm doing this during the day, so I'm going to use the express mousse. I typically leave it on for the full three hours, depending on how much I'm doing on the computer. Today I actually have two calls and then I have a bunch of emails to do, which is perfect. I'm literally gonna sit naked in a robe, <laughs> have the two calls, answer emails, do my thing, do admin stuff. And that's kind of how I'm able to like literally sit naked at home. Obviously this is a unique time in the world. We are still in lockdown. So something like this might not be as easy to do when we're out and about and working in the normal world. But while I'm at home and I have time at home and I am living with myself and my partner, so I don't mind walking around a little naked naked. <laughs> 
it makes the day tanning much easier. So, and on that note as well, actually, I found that doing the daytime tan versus the nighttime is actually a lot better in terms of creasing. First of all, the developer is sitting on my skin for less time when I'm doing it during the day. And I find that that kind of helps with making it look a little bit more natural. I'm just not leaving it on as long when I'm going to bed. I am sleeping for seven to eight hours. So it's like developing the maximum time. So that's when I find I can look a little bit orange just cause I am so pale. So I have total control on how long I'm leaving it on. I can like physically watch my skin developing and keep an eye on it. And then also I'm not like laying down or, you know, rubbing my face in my pillow or anything. Like the streaks are just less frequent with the daytime soak. So if you're able to, I'd highly recommend taking like a morning on a weekend and doing your daytime bask. I, I found that the tan is just much more effective and natural looking when doing it this way. Now prepping my skin for the tan, I would ideally like to leave time for my moisturizer, like my body lotion to dry down before applying the tan. But there are certain tans that say, do not apply anything to the skin before applying tan. And then there's tans like this, that's like moisturize your dry areas and then apply the tan. As someone who like, I am literally pruning already. I exit the shower and I am instantly so dry. Like I could not possibly put a tan on without putting lotion on prior. So just be sure to keep an eye on that. It'll say it on the back, like with the application directions. So you can kind of use your own discretion on how precisely you want to follow the instructions. But for me, I must put lotion on. So I'm going to take my body lotion. The one, I, the one I'm using right now is a very beautiful gift from Sicily. This is the Black Rose Beautifying Lotion. Oh, stunning. And the one thing I'm going to do, again, I'm not going to show you my whole body right now, um, <laughs> but I focus this on the dry areas. So for me, that's my elbows. I get really, really dry, like on the backs of my arms. So I just focus it there. I also get really dry, like here in the armpit, kind of like focus on areas that typically see like creasing in the tan, like where the product builds up a lot for you. So for me, it's literally like this armpit area that gets a lot of like streaks and uh, build up of the tan. So I try and make sure to focus the lotion there. Sorry, I was like really itchy. This is what happens when I itch myself the knees, the ankles, areas like that. I'm basically just not putting like the bulk of the lotion on the larger surface areas of my skin, if that makes sense. So I'm just focusing on my knees, focusing on my ankles, and then I rub the excess throughout my leg. And the same with the arms, like I just put it in my elbows, this area, and then I rub the excess through and it just kind of makes the barrier a little bit thinner between your skin and the tan, but you're still getting that nice moisture. So I've applied my lotion. Now I am gonna let that sit and kind of set into my skin a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and blow dry my hair. This just gives the lotion a little bit of time to soak in. And then I don't want my hair to be wet when I'm applying tan. Like I want it to be dried. I wanna get the shape, make sure that my part is nice and blow dried in place. And then I can tie my hair up out of the way. And I'll talk about that in a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and blow dry my hair now. We are blow dried. So this next hair part is a little bit hit or miss. Sometimes it's successful, sometimes it's not. I have not nailed down a for sure way to do this, but once I blow dried my hair, I do a middle part and some of my hair, honestly, it's still kind of damp. Like I don't do a full thorough blow dry, but what I will do, I always take a little bit of dry shampoo and I put it right at the front. I just, it's more so out of habit than function at this point, you know? So basically what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna brush my hair up, I'm gonna twist it and you know, do an attempt to create some natural heatless curls. I've been doing this for a long time, but sometimes it just does not look nice and smooth. And I just don't seem to have the fine hair motor skills to do this properly. But I basically just take my hair in two big sections and twist it around like this. To create a little bun, I take the clip and I clip it in place. And, and that is one. Honestly, that worked out pretty great. My sideburns are just Wow, they're always here and out to play They are ready. So I'm basically just giving myself some Princess Leia buns. I try and make it as smooth as possible, but sometimes, sometimes when I take the clip out, it just looks really like not cute and it'll kind of be bouncing all over the place, but that's fine. I can just feel it. This one's gonna be, I need to bend over for this. Sorry, bye. There's the buns. Here's my little Princess Leia buns. I feel like this one needs a little bit more reinforcement. Boop, or else it's gonna fall. Yeah, so I let my hair kind of finish completing its air dry like this and hopefully it'll give us a little bit of volume and a little bit of a curl at the end of it. But typically when I'm washing my hair like throughout the week, I like to leave the first day or two 
natural, like just air dried, something like this. Some kind of a heatless hairstyle that can really also be boring for me. I just tuck my hair behind my ears and let it slide. But usually I try to style it like at a two or three. And this is like my ideal scenario. It's different all the time. If I need to do my hair in a particular way for a shoot or something we're filming, then so be it. Also, I need to revisit the air wrap because I, I would like to incorporate that in my hair routine, but I just haven't had like enough time or like a free day to just sit and play with it and get comfortable with it. So I plan on probably doing that over the summer and seeing how it goes. But for now, every day may <laughs> is popping. I'm just gonna stick to my regular routine that I know and then I will hopefully get more comfortable with that as time goes on. So now our hair is officially out of the way, we can go into the tanning portion and the lotion has also had some time to sit and soak. So let's go in with the tan. I just have the Saint Tropez Mint. It actually drives me crazy. Um, the little fluffs fall off and like get stuck into the tan on your body. It's very annoying. And also the inside is like really slippy and slimy. <laughs> as your like hand is sweating in it and your hand just moves around, it's annoying. If you guys have any tanning mitt recommendations, I'd love to know. But basically with the tan, I start on my face. Yes, I do apply this on my face. I haven't had any problems. I have very sensitive skin and I break out very easily to many products and I haven't had a problem with this. So with a clean mitt, I start on my face and I just take one kind of pump and I'll also simultaneously be using my e.l.f. stipple brush. And I use that to kind of just like rub the tanning lotion or mousse into the mitt and then I just go ahead and apply it to my face and I'll kind of go between like blending it out with the brush like really getting into the hairline here and applying more but I wouldn't take this ball and just like slap it on my face right like I want it to be a little bit more of a smooth application so I just try to really blend it out I have tried the tanning contour thing. So many of you send me the TikTok of the girl doing the contour. It doesn't work for me. I have tried it. <laughs> There's like too much of a contrast like between the tan and my real skin. I just have to apply it everywhere. Like if I were to literally just, it just doesn't work. I don't know. I don't know why. I have tried. It just, uh, yeah. It's okay though, because just applying the tan in itself <laughs> adds contour and makes you just look so much more chiseled and jacked. So yeah, just kind of like rubbing the bulk of the product on. I'll go in and just blend it out with a little stipple brush. Make sure to put some on the ears there. The tan always gets muddled up in my sideburns here. Sometimes there's like a big chunk of goopy tan and it's so unfortunate. Kikuranido, that is what to do. There's the tan. I might go in and apply a second layer as we go on, but I just wanna make sure that the first layer is good and in there. Then I'll go on to the arms and the chest. And I have absolutely no techniques here. I literally just slap it on as you do. Make sure to get the neck, make sure to get behind the neck. Just trying to remove the streaks. This is the benefit of using a mousse or like a tanning product where you can see the color. You can see where you have streaks and where you need to blend it out. That was where I had a little bit of difficulty with the tanning lotions and tanning waters is that you'd spray it on, put it on, and you wouldn't be able to see where you need to blend it out more. So I just found it very, very streaky. Like the likelihood of streaking was much more present when I was using the waters and the lotions. So that's why I've ultimately decided to go back to the mousse life. So I'm just applying that on, making sure to like really nicely rub out the elbow. Although for me, I always end up having orange elbows no matter what. And I also leave my hands bare. I'll get to that in a bit, but I'm gonna go ahead and get through this layer, get the large surface area limbs out of the way, just blending that through. I kind of start with the bulk of the product on the inside of the arm and blend it out just so I'm not putting like a huge amount directly onto the elbow where I know that I get more streaky where there's more product buildup. So just try and really wipe away that buildup in the armpit. Then I move on to the stomach, the butt, the legs. Like the hands, I'm also going to leave my feet out. I'm not gonna apply anything onto my feet yet because once I'm done applying on the main portions of my body, I will go back in with the stipple brush and apply the tan onto my hands and feet. I only started doing that over the last like few weeks or months and it's made such a difference in the streakiness and the deep orange and Dorito-ness of my hands and feet. It's definitely helped a lot just using a brush instead of applying it with the mitt. I'm gonna apply it on the rest of my body and I'll meet you back for the hands. 
Okay, so now that I've applied it onto the rest of my body, this is where I enlist Dan to help me with my very white back. I do not understand people who are able to do that themselves. They deserve an award. I do not have that shoulder flexibility. Dan absolutely steps in and does my back here. So he's gonna do my back and then I'll come back to do the hands. Dan just did my back, then I just soak the mitt in the sink. This is the second time I've used this mitt, so I don't know how many more uses I'll get out of it. But I always just rinse all the tan out after the fact. So then for the hands, taking the tan, I'm gonna do a little whoop here. And I just take the brush and I blend it out and try to like really kindly get into the knuckles and things and just really lightly put like the smallest amount around my fingers. If I need to apply more lotion, I will, but really, I'll just like wash my hands later before actually rinsing my whole body so they're not sitting in the developer as long. But I just do this with a stipple brush, just like a tiny little, tiny little dollop and just blend that around. It's always difficult with this little fused bracelet. I always end up having some kind of line <laughs> on my wrist left over. And then also like, I love tracking my daily activity on my Apple Watch. And when I do these daytime tanning sessions, I can't put my watch on after, so. It doesn't account for any of my steps that I take in those few hours. <laughs> but yeah, I try to just steer clear of all my jewelry when I'm doing this and while I'm baking, obviously. So, nice little light stipple on the hands. I'm gonna do the same on my feet. <laughs> okay, guys, the tan's applied. One final check just to make sure that we're all, we're all good. It's already starting to develop and get deeper. I feel like I'm back on a beach already. So usually, honestly, I will like sit here and walk around a little bit naked for a, a hot bit just to let it all dry. But because I've been talking through this, it's honestly feeling pretty dry already. So I then take my tanning robe. This is my H&M linen robe. I've had this forever, but it's honestly perfect for these scenarios when you need to bop around baking in a tan because it's not gonna ruin it. It's not gonna stain it. It's already a nice tanned shade. So this is the robe I use to stroll in and wander in. It's always amazing when I answer the door like this. I'm like, hello, thank you for my mail. <laughs> but this is how I'm gonna bake for the next couple of hours. I'm gonna go ahead, hop on my calls. I have my first call in three minutes. I have another call after that. And then I'll do some emails and we'll check in when the tan is nice and baked and when we're ready to rinse it off. So hopefully that was a helpful insight on how I apply the tan. I've taken many of your guys' tips. So thank you so much for all your tips over these last, well, years. <laughs> and I'm gonna go ahead and go about my day in this naked Princess Leia state. <laughs> Ta-da! Okay, so I've rinsed it off and what we have left is, um, yeah, just a much lighter, more natural looking tan. Sorry, I'm so cold. Ooh, it's such a cold, 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 rainy day and I just, ugh. Yeah, we just have a lovely, warm glow left over. Hardly any streaks, the feet are looking Fresh, fresh feet, no Dorito streaks. Please don't mind my toes. <laughs> now for the hair reveal. Oh no. Yeah, this was such a fail, but <laughs> look at the bounce. Look at the natural, look at the volume that we've got. It's insane. I would just need to fix up these little front bits and then, well, <laughs> we're good to go. <laughs> Oh my God, that is hilarious. If anyone has any tips on how to prevent this happening from the twist, let me know in the comments. I'm just gonna take a bit more of my body lotion and just go over my dry spots. I should know I didn't use soap in the shower for this rinse. I just literally rinse the developer off. And uh, yeah, I just gotta rehydrate a little cause I am that dry. My knees are literally scales. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take my little Dyson Corral, just to fix up the spots on the top of the head. I'm just running it really loosely over those little bumps. Whoop. The nice thing about using the Corral for this is it just heats up in like two seconds. All right, so we just took care of the bumps and then what we have 
left over is just really nice naturally volumized hair it kind of looks like i've had a blowout like for reference my hair dries completely limp and straight so this just added so much volume and without heat i mean i went and used the heat after but ideally that wouldn't be happening if I knew how to twist it correctly. But this is just one of the ways that I like to do my hair after I blow dry. It's just a nice way to get the hair out of the way when we are doing our tan. And guys, that's, that's my little beauty routine. Now my hair is nice and fresh and masked and ready to go on for the week. I try to only wash my hair about once or twice a week. So this is kind of the, the day one. I'll just tuck it between my ears like this. And if I leave it tucked for a while, it'll get a natural little wave in the front bangs there. And that's just kind of how I roll with it. And then this will be my tan for the week. My face tan will always wear off first. So I like to touch it up with the little St. Tropez Purity Vitamins Serum. This is a nice way to just add some more glow throughout the week as a tan phase. And then I do it all again next week. So I hope that this was helpful for those of you who are wanting some insight into both my hair routine and my tanning routine, kind of a little two in one here. And here's just a few of my little tips and tricks as I do both of those things. So let me know what you like to do in the comments down below. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much as always for watching and I'll see you all tomorrow for a new Everyday May video. Bye.